Leona Bilar, and in her 15th season at the helm of the Orange and Brown, it's head coach, Carrie Turner. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask that everybody please rise as we honor America, as well as all those who have served, those who are serving, and those who will be serving in our armed forces with the playing of our national anthem.
for competing here in Anderson. Now I'm getting a little nervous. Now you are. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. The BGSU crowd seems to be a little hype, so hopefully it's a good day. It's a pretty nice little turnout. Yeah. No, usually. Inside Anderson Arena today, Bowling Green set to take on Northern Illinois in gymnastics alongside Giovanna East. Brandon Lowe welcoming you in and in for an exciting afternoon here. Yes, we are. Um, BG's looking for their first win this tonight. So hopefully they can pull that out. So first up on vault, we have Lily Hart. That was a Yuchenko tuck full. It was all right. However, she did take a couple of steps out on that landing, so that'll be a little bit of a deduction, but a good start for Bowling Green. And we are gonna be moving over to the bars here where we will have Leanna Roman for Northern. And as we look through the order for both teams, Bowling Green will go vault, bars, beam, and floor. Northern Illinois will go bars, vault, floor, then beam. And ending on that floor routine is a little bit of a home field advantage per se yes. in the gymnastics world. Yes, it is. Um, you really want to bring that excitement when you're ending out on floor. So hopefully Bowling Green can take it home for us. about ready to go here on the bars for Northern Illinois. Making sure everything's set and ready to go here on bars. First competitor of the afternoon and it looks like we're ready to go. All right, this is Leanna Roman for NIU. Just a tad bit short on that handstand. Great, that was beautiful. Beautiful bail to handstand onto the low bar. Let's see how she finishes this routine out. It's looking pretty good so far. Beautiful double layout, and she had a small hop, but that's better than taking a step, so that'll be a good start for NIU. We mentioned how important a strong finish is, just as important to start strong off the bat. Yes, yes it is. You want to make sure that you're really ending it off with a stick. So you're going to see a lot of sticks here probably tonight. And on vault, that is Bro Lauren Bannister. And that was a Yuchenko layout. A little bit of a lower start value. Um, Bowling Green's definitely going to want to see some bigger scores here. But that was a great Yuchenko layout. Now we're going to head back over to the bars with Kelsey. And the score for Lily Harsh is in with a 9575. A little bit of a low start. Definitely want to see those 9 sixes in the beginning of the lineup, but hopefully we can get there as the season progresses. Just waiting on that score for Leanna to come in. And we will continue to update you with the scores as they come to us throughout the afternoon. And the score in for in is in for Lauren Bannister with a 9-6. It's actually pretty good building throughout the lineup so far, even though it was the first two girls. You mentioned you really wanted to see that 9-6 mark right away. Second for Bowling Green, and it hits that 9-6 just like you wish for. Yeah, hopefully Bowling Green continues to build throughout that lineup, and they can possibly drop that 9-5-7-5. And the score is in on bars for Leanna Roman with a 9-6-5. And here we go with Kelsey. Just a tad bit short on that casting handstand. Oh, just didn't make it over the bar on that blind. I just think she kind of lost a little bit of momentum. She really did try to fight it, which is good, but unfortunately, NIU is going to have to take the fall. But hopefully they can drop that fall. 
That's one of the things both teams will be looking for is to drop their lower score in each individual event. Yeah, so there will be six girls up and five scores will count. And we'll see if Bowling Green continue to, can continue to improve their vault scores. Yep, and she just remounted the bar. She's going to try again just to get that connection. There we go. That was gorgeous. Beautiful Takacha. Just a really short on that handstand. Just a tad bit loose. I think NIU is going to want to be looking to have tighter bars going through the lineup. Just a tad bit slow on that rotation on the double layout, but overall she did a great job finishing that routine. And you yourself were an all-around competitor here at Bowling Green, so take us through what's the thought process like when you're on the bars? When you're on the bars, you really just want to take it one skill at a time and make sure you're not rushing through the routine. And that was Brooke McNamara on the vault with the Uchenko full. It wasn't bad, just a step, but otherwise great progression for BGSU on the vault. mentioned both teams will look to try to continue to improve. We'll go back to the bars for Northern Illinois. And this will be Emma Lease. As soon as the judges are ready to go, just finalizing those scores here. And these scores in with the 8-9. Unfortunately, NIU is going to want to drop that score, and they're going to look to build with these last couple of girls going up. And during these moments that you're waiting on the scores to be official and you're waiting to begin your routine, do any more nerves set in in a delayed wait? Sometimes, but it, when you're really calm and you're really focused on what you're about to do, you can pretty much get through, the, through it until you start your routine. Just a little unrotated on that Takachi. You want to see a little bit more rotated so that way you can get that swing into that kit, but she managed to cover up very well. Just finishing up for this dismount. Beautiful double layout. I wish she would have got that stick. She took a small step back, but overall, that was a decent routine. Great to, great after that fall for NIM. And the score is in for Brooke with a 9.55. And this is Catherine. Beautiful Uchenko full. A little bit of a hop, but she managed to cover it up pretty well. Uh, Bowling Green is starting to look very well going through this lineup for BG. Hopefully that's a good score for BG. Next up for NIU on the bars will be Alana Anderson. And the score is in, I believe, no, not yet. <laughs> is about to be finalized for NIU and it is in with a 9575 a little bit of a lower one but I think NIU can definitely pull it together and get a pretty decent bar score and the score is in for Catherine with a 9675 definitely building throughout this BG lineup for on vault for sure And here we go with Alana. Beautiful. 
beautiful up to the high bar into a lovely bail that hit straight to handstand. That's definitely what the judges want to be looking for. And she's bit, she has very clean lines throughout this routine so far. Let's see how she finishes it. Beautiful routine besides the dismount, just a step forward, but otherwise that's definitely going to be a great routine for NIU to count towards their bar score. And we are back over to the vault with Katrina. Another Yuchenko full for BG. That was a beautiful full. She had great lines throughout the air. Just need to get those landings put together. I think that's the struggle that BG is having a little bit on vault is getting those landings, getting those stuck landings, not taking so many steps. Now you yourself, having graduated in 2020, you got to compete with some of these girls on BG's team and some you got to compete against some of the other girls around the conference. So what were some of your experiences like in meets like this? In meets like this, I think you just want to stay calm and not focus too much on the scores. Don't focus on anybody else that's going around. You just want to stay within yourself and within your team. Because as soon as you start looking around, you start to lose focus just a little bit. And we really want to make sure that we stay focused in ourselves so we can get all those good scores and get big scores at that. And we are going to move back over to the bars. The score is in for Alana with a 9-8. That was great. That was a beautiful routine. That was the score that NIU was definitely looking for. And now we are going to see Morgan. Beautiful handstand. Just a little bit of leg separation on that, but great control into the bail. Nice handstand. Now let's see this dismount. Beautiful full in, just her chest was a little bit down. But overall, I think just a lot of form errors. Just need to stay a little bit tighter through the air. Otherwise, that was a great routine, should build. The score for Katrina is in with a 9.55. And this is Taylor Jensen. That was a wonderful Yuchenko full. She definitely got that landing, maybe a small, tiny step, but let's see what the judges give her. But I think she had great lines through the air that she scored big for BG. Just what you're looking for to try to build throughout your lineup. Definitely. And Bowling Green may just have done it there. Just waiting on that score to come in on bars for Morgan and it is in with a 9-7. Great. Continuing to build throughout that lineup. This is something that NIU was definitely looking for after that fall. And this is Brooklyn. Beautiful. Great handstand. Just a tad bit short on that bail to handstand. She has gorgeous lines, which is definitely something the judges are going to be looking for as well. So close to getting that stick, but just one step. But I think that was a great routine for NIU. I just think throughout this entire lineup, they really just need to make sure that they get back into the gym and just work on those little form things because it's going to come down to those little tents here and there. And we're going to go back over to the vault with an exhibition. Lexi Bornhorn. That was a soup tuck full, and it looked pretty good. I definitely think that she could work on her landings just a little bit more, just a small step, but otherwise definitely something good to get her in for this meet. And we talked about the exhibitions. Not going to count towards the scores, but it's an opportunity for coaches to get a look at different athletes and how they can perform in this meet type scenario. Yes, you definitely want to see just in case you have any injuries, which we would never want. But it's definitely something, or if there's a possibility that they could be better for the lineup, it's a great opportunity for these athletes.
and the score is in for Taylor Jensen with a 9875. And the score is also in for Brooklyn for NIU on bars with a 9-8. And this is the exhibition for NIU on bars, O'Leary. Just a little slow on that kip, which is why she was just a tad bit short on that handstand. Beautiful connection, just a tiny bit of leg separation. Let's see her finish this routine out. Just, a, again, a little short on that handstand. And she got the landing. That was a pretty good routine for NIU for that to be their exhibition. The score is in for Lexi with a 9.425. And to finalize the team scores, Bowling Green got a 48.275 on vault. And NIU got a 48.525 on bars. I definitely think that was a good start for both teams on this first rotation. So coming up, we'll switch. Bowling Green will head to the bars. NIU will head to the vault. We'll take a short break, and we'll be back. if you're willing to wake up 4.30 in the morning for mandatory workouts. Those hands will go down because not everyone's willing to make those sacrifices. Keep your hands up if you're willing to put student first. All the responsibilities that it takes to be a student athlete. Are you up for that challenge? The lifelong friends that you will make, the failed attempts that you will learn from, the education that you will earn will all develop you for life after sports. So I'll ask you, are you willing to compete? Are you willing to execute? And are you willing to be a leader? Are you ready? My major does not define me. I'll probably be working jobs that don't exist yet. I want a fulfilling career and to make a difference. A rewarding life starts with being true to yourself then taking action. Our design coaches help identify what empowers you so you can think big, try boldly, and stay curious. A BGSU education is bigger than a degree. It's a toolkit. For a life of purpose. I think education changed dramatically through the pandemic. 
We saw teachers being incredibly creative and reaching out to one another to network for ideas to keep students engaged and still learning. Our commitment was to make sure that people were educated, to do it in a safe environment. One faculty member brought a camper and parked outside to meet students there. We could space out and do the office hours in a, a socially distanced, safe manner. And I just wanted to let my students know that you know, I'm a real person outside of the Zoom box. For a lot of faculty, this was the first time they've been teaching online, but for faculty in our college, we've had robust online programming for years. And they became really great resources. Starting in the spring of 2020, we worked with local school districts to organize these academic enrichment camps. Our faculty, staff, and students, we made a difference in people's lives, and I think that's what a public university for the public good should be about. Colleges and universities are no longer accepting just a student. We are accepting an entire support network and family unit with them. How do we engage and leverage our families to be supporters and partners so their students can be more successful inside and outside the classroom? Parent Family New Student Connections was created and established in November 2020 to provide support, communication, advocacy, education for our families. We're not asking our families to drop them off and leave. We're actually saying, be a partner. One of our favorite new initiatives is during move-in weekend, we've hosted a tassel ceremony where we have given our families a tassel, which is a promise from the institution that their voice and presence and support and partnership will make the difference in helping their students be successful. As we evolve as a department, one of the ways that we wanna activate our current families is creating a parent council. Having voices of current families advise us, advise our department, we are working towards the same goal, which is retaining and graduating our students. Back here inside Anderson Arena, we've switched events and we'll remind you of the scores for Bowling Green. Their vault score comes in at 48.275 for NIU on the bars, 48.525. They've flip-flopped back and forth. Now Northern Illinois will head to the vault, and it'll be Bowling Green on the bars. Yep. So the vault lineup for NIU will be Olivia Lind, Sierra Ryan, Morgan Hooper, Brooklyn Sears, Emily Snook, and Gabby Welch. And for bars, it'll be Lexi Bornhorn, Catherine Wellbacker, Taylor Jensen, Paige Bachner, Lily Harsh, and Tess Muir. And we are going to start on the vault with NIU. This will be Olivia. Just a good look at the fans here. It is the pink meet tonight. Pretty nice turnout today. Yes, it is. Love seeing the fat heads. It's been a tradition in BG for a couple of years now. <laughs> and, oh, that was a Yuchenko tuck half. That'll definitely be a higher start value because it is a blind landing, but overall that was pretty good. She just was a little close to that vault. You want to see a little bit of distance when it comes to judging, but otherwise that was a pretty good start for NIU. And we are moving back over to the bars with Lexi. Just a tiny bit short on that cast handstand. Beautiful blind. Beautiful connection. She just hit her feet on the floor. We hate to see that. Again, just a little short on that handstand. And let's see this dismount. And she gets the stick. Overall, that was a decent routine for BG. And besides hitting her feet on the mentioned she did stick the landing there, and we talked about during the break. It's so hard to do because your body still has all the momentum moving whichever way you're originally going and then just have to stop on a dime. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a interesting vault. You don't see it often, but overall, 
it was a decent start for NIU. Honestly, her chest was just a little bit low, and we hate to see that. It is going to be a deduction, but overall that should build for NIU. And the score is in for Olivia on vault with a 9.55. And we're going to move back over to the bars, and this will be Catherine. Just waiting on scores to be finalized from Lexi. And we will be giving you that score momentarily. And you mentioned this is still very early on in the season for these teams, even though Bowling Green's registered six meets, Northern Illinois has <laughs> early on a lot of time before we get to the conference championships in March. Yes, yes it is. They want to start building from this meet to get those higher scores once the season progresses. And this is Catherine. Good. She has beautiful lines, which is definitely going to be something that the judges are going to be looking for. You don't want to see too many form breaks when you have beautiful lines like hers. Great pants hand. Could have been a tad bit short, but I'm very unsure. Great landing, just a small hop backwards, but that was definitely a good bar routine for BG. Should build from Lexi, and the score is in for Lexi with a 9.625. Great start for Bowling Green, and this is Morgan on vault. That was a Yuchenko tuck full. It looks like her legs may have started bending on the vault just a little bit, and we want to see those legs stay straight until she starts that flip and that twist but overall that was good landing for NIU and that should be a great score for them and the score is in for Sierra Ryan with a 9.625 great building from the first girl for NIU Next up on the bars will be Taylor Jensen. You can see she's very focused right now, waiting for that score to come in so she can salute and go. And the score is in for Morgan from NIU with a 9.625. And you saw Taylor Jensen do the vault for Bowling Green earlier. And Another thing you talked about was how important it was to refocus after each event and just focus on where you're at. Yes, you want to make sure you stay right in the moment. You don't want to get too sidetracked because then you're going to be very unfocused and you could make a mistake moving into that next event. But it looks like Taylor's doing a great job just staying focused and knowing that she's on bars and she could hit this routine. And the score is in for Catherine with a 9.675. Beautiful handstand. She has beautiful lines when she does the bars. Beautiful to contribute to a bail. Let's see how she finishes this routine out. Great handstand. Let's see the dismount. Just a step on the landing, but overall a great routine for Bowling Green on bars, especially coming off of what happened last weekend at home. Definitely building upon that this, this meet. And we're going back over to the vault with Brooklyn. That was a Uchenko full from Brooklyn. That was gorgeous. She had great form through the air. And she took a small step on that landing, but that should build upon Morgan's vault and get a great score for NIU. And we are going to go back over to the bars with Paige Bachner.
the score is in for Taylor Jensen with a 9.75. Great building throughout this lineup so far. And the score is also in for Brooklyn Sears with a 9.7. I think both teams are doing a great job on both events, really building upon each other and really building that energy as they go through the lineup. This is Paige Bachner. Great handstand. Just a little short on that bail. Good handstand. BG's doing a great job trying to get at those little details. A couple of steps on that dismount, but she did pretty good throughout the routine. Definitely think they're going to want to look at cleaning up a little bit of the form details just as far as the way she's swinging, the way she's hitting those cast handstands, as well as that blind. And we're back over to the vault with Emily. Another UJ go full for NIU, and that was beautiful. Another step, but overall that should be another good score for NIU. back over to the bars with Lily Harsh. Score is in for Emily with a nine set with a nine seven seven five, and the score is also in for Paige Backner with a nine six seven five. Blind. It finishes just a little bit on top of the ball. That was a gorgeous release. Bale may have been a little bit short of that handstand, but overall it, was, it had great form. Good cast handstand. Beautiful blindfold. Just a little bit of feet separation. And a great stick on that double back dismount. That should be a great score for Bowling Green on the bars. You can see some of her teammates are really excited for that routine. Oh, <laughs> We are heading back over to the vault with Gabby. Another you take a full, just a small hop, but overall that had great form, great hop height off of that table. That should be a great score for NAU finishing up their lineup. the bars with Tess Muir and the score just came in for Lily Harsh with a 9-8. I think Bowling Green has done a great job building throughout this lineup, especially after what happened last weekend. The score is also in for Gabby with a 9-8. Archie on that cast handstand. That was a great bail to handstand. She needed just a little bit more rotation on that toe up. And that was a decent routine for Bowling Green. I definitely think they're going to want to go back into the gym and work on those little form breaks here and there. Just a little bit Archie on a lot of those blinds and that bail as well. But overall, decent routine. 
and we're going to head back over to Vault. This is Emma, their exhibition. That was a Uchenko layout. Overall, good form. She did hop just a tiny bit on that landing, but that should be a good score. Again, it won't count towards NIU's total Vault score, but great to get her some, some time and beats. Bowling Green will also have an exhibition, and this will be Katrina. And just to go over these scores, NIU has a 48.525 on ball, and we're just waiting on that score to come in from Tess to give you what the total team score on bars will be for BG. in for Tess Muir with a 9.55 and that brings their team score to a 9.85 48.525 my apologies and this is Katrina good cast just a little short on that blind pool. Great bell. Let's see how she finishes this routine. That looks like it was right up to handstand. Into a double layout. Just a couple of steps. Definitely want to try and minimize the amount of steps you take out of a dismount. But overall, decent routine for BG, even though that was an exhibition. And that will conclude our second rotation. Again, Bowling Green on bars got a 48.525. And for NIU on the vault, that will be a 48.525 team score. So we will head to the break. When we come back, we'll head to the second half. As Bowling Green will head to the beam, NIU will head to the floor. It started with you. A breeze building momentum. A movement gathering force. Even before you could see it, you could feel it. The flutter of hope. The rush of potential. The inexplicable pull toward the edge of opportunity. Falcons take flight. Seven years ago, Bowling Green State University challenged our community to join us in changing lives for the world. Powered by the strength of Falcons who came before us, guided by our indomitable spirit, together we rise. Even as the world took new shape amidst a global pandemic, we fixed our sights on tomorrow's horizon. You gave and it altered our course. You gave and we are forever changed united in our vision of the future. More than 38,000 donors answered the call, representing all 50 states and 26 countries. More than 160,000 contributions were given, raising over $250 million. 101.7 million in scholarship and student support funds were committed, creating 235 new scholarship funds to accelerate student success and accessibility. More than $28 million in gift revenue was received in fiscal year 2020 alone. Our highest level of yearly philanthropic support, demonstrating the unparalleled commitment of Falcons in the face of extraordinary upheaval. Stirred by emotion, propelled by purpose, lifted by your empowerment, we are airborne. From historic gifts that changed our campuses to focused contributions ensuring that all Falcons soar. Your impact is profound. We are educating the world's next generation of trailblazers to forge ahead, honoring our historic strength in business education, preparing journalists, media, and communication professionals to seek the truth, skating with an eye toward the future, and building up our frontline healthcare heroes for those with the courage to respond and preserve our public health. 
This is not the end of a campaign. It's the beginning of our path forward. One renewed with meaning and optimism, unbridled by the convention. Thank you all for being here today. You are here because you made a decision to be collegiate student athletes. So clap it up for yourselves. So let me ask you a question. Raise your hand if you wanna win a conference championship. Raise your hand if you wanna win a national championship. National championship. Keep your hands up if you're willing to wake up 4.30 in the morning for mandatory workouts. Those hands will go down because not everyone's willing to make those sacrifices. Keep your hands up if you're willing to put student first. All the responsibilities that it takes to be a student athlete. Are you up for that challenge? The lifelong friends that you will make, the failed attempts that you will learn from, the education that you will earn will all develop you for life after sports. So I'll ask you, are you willing to compete? Are you willing to execute? And are you willing to be a leader? Are you ready? My major does not define me. I'll probably be working jobs that don't exist yet. I want a fulfilling career and to make a difference. A rewarding life starts with being true to yourself, then taking action. Our design coaches help identify what empowers you so you can think big, try boldly, and stay curious. A BGSU education is bigger than a degree. It's a toolkit. For a life of purpose. I think education changed dramatically through the pandemic. We saw teachers being incredibly creative and reaching out to one another to network for ideas to keep students engaged and still learning. Our commitment was to make sure that people were educated, to do it in a safe environment. One faculty member brought a camper and parked outside to meet students there. We could space out and do the office hours in a, a socially distanced, safe manner. And I just wanted to let my students know that you know, I'm a real person outside of the Zoom box. For a lot of Back here from Anderson Arena, first just first about first ready to get into our third event for both teams. For Bowling Green, they'll be on the beam. NIU will have the floor, scores through thus far on the vault bowling green a 48.275 on the vault niu a 48.525 and both teams scored a 48.525 on the bars bringing the totals to niu leading at 97.05 and bowling green close behind 96.8 so yep. what are you looking for here from bowling green Cut into that margin. Cut into that margin. They really want to make sure that they're focused and confident on this beam rotation. They want to make sure that they're really going to make sure that they're showing off those skills that they're really hitting and making sure that they're getting those stuck landings. I think that's something that NIU has a little bit over them is that they're getting those stuck landings and they're really focusing in on those details. Just to go over the lineup for both teams on beam for Bowling Green, we have Emily, Katrina, Lily, Taylor, Catherine and Dahlia and 
on floor for NIU, we will have Morgan, Gabby, Brooklyn, Emelise, Alana, and Tara. Starting on the beam with Emily. Gary just getting in those last minute talks before the athlete goes on beam just to calm their nerves just a little bit. <laughs> And you've been in this situation before, so how does this conversation usually go? Um, Carrie usually runs through the routine with you, just telling you a little details to remember when you're going through the routine and how to stick those landings and just to be confident because she believes in you, so she wants to make sure that you believe in yourself as well before you hit, go up there and salute and do your beam routine. And this is Emily Christiglia. And what's nice about Beam is especially when you're at home, for us, you get to have a Beam song that you pick personally, and it'll play while you do your Beam routine just to keep you focused. Just a little bit of a bounce check on that full turn. Beautiful front toss into her back handspring. She looks very confident on this Beam right now. She's doing great on some of these connections. You really want to make sure that you're going through these connections very well. You don't want to take any pauses or anything like that, but stay very focused and in the moment. Beautiful. I think she just has the dismount left to go. That was a gorgeous dismount. This is a beautiful routine. Great start for Bowling Green. She was very confident, moved well across the beam. This is going to be a great score. And that's just the start Bowling Green needed as to what we were talking about to try to cut that margin and maybe even pull out in front. Yes. And we're going to head over to the floor with Morgan Hooper. That was a nice run up by Kinsman, double back. Now floor is where you really get to show that personality off. You get a routine customized to you. You get to pick the music and you just get to have fun. This is when you see a lot of the girls on the team probably doing pieces of their floor routine. Seems like she's having fun out there right now. Heading into her second pass. Round off one and a half, front layout, gorgeous. No form breaks, great lines through that twist and through that front layout, and she did a great landing on that. And she's gonna be moving into her last pass. You can see some of her teammates having a little bit of fun with her out there. Headed into her last pass. Not if I can spring double pike, just a small hop on that landing. But overall, this was a great routine for NIU. Great start. All of her landings were great. Her form was tight. Her leaps were good. They all hit 180. This should be a good score for NIU. Now we're headed back over to the beam for Emily Castiglia. She got a 9.775. Again, great start for Bull Green. Definitely the start they were looking for. And this is Katrina. Beautiful full turn. Backhand spring layout. Beautiful. 
toe, nice straight legs, pointed toes. Beautiful jump series. She's moving well across the game right now, very confident. any hesitation in any of the skills that she's doing, which is amazing. Now moving into her dismount. Ground up one and a half, small hop on that dismount, but overall a great routine for Bowling Green. This lineup should be building very well. The scores in for Morgan Hooper with a 9-8. Great start for NAU on this floor rotation. And this is Gabby Welch. Moving into her first pass. Rada back in to make double bat. Just a small tiny hop on that landing, but overall that had great form. And it was very controlled. for NIA that just spilled off of the first one. Now even though Bowling Green's trying to close in on that margin there, NIU seems to be pulling forward just a little bit more each, each routine. We are back over to the theme. The score is in for Katrina with a 9-8 and this is Lily Harsh. Just a little bit of a balance check on that full turn. She looks very focused going into this. I can't turn the layout. She covered that very well, but that was a little bit of a wobble, depending on what the judges are going to do with that. Just a little bit of a hesitation into that side aerial, but overall she did well. Focus back in here. I think she may have gotten a little bit frazzled after that first hesitation. Here she goes heading into that dismount. Front full, just a little bit of a sidestep, but overall a decent routine. May have hesitated on a couple of connections, but I definitely think that she may pull out a good score here. And we are headed back over to the floor. Gabby Welch with the 9-8 again, and here is Brooklyn Sears. And you mentioned each competitor picking their own music. How important was that music selection when you were out? When I was out there, that music selection was so important to me. I wanted to be able to have fun really, not so focused on the me per se, but really just make sure that I'm having fun with my floor routine. Because if you're not having fun, then what are you doing? Beautiful leaps. All of her splits hit 180, which is really important. goes into her second pass. Round off one and a half front layout. Good landing, very controlled. Here she goes 
heading into that last pass. Double back into a stuck landing. That's starting to become really common in gymnastics with the stuck landing with two feet. I used to always have to take a small step out of it, but overall, great routine for NIU. Definitely building upon each other, especially with the teammates really cheering them on. Up next on the beam will be Taylor Jensen. We're still waiting on that score for Lily Harsh. And here we go on game with Taylor Jensen. A little bit of a bounce check on that full turn. Legs are straight, toes are pointed. She looks very happy with that series. Split strong straddle three quarter. Great, just a small balance check there again. Beautiful side aerial. She's smiling through this routine. You don't see that often, but when they do hit their skills, sometimes they tend to smile. Dismount back handspring, one and a half, small step forward, but all, overall great. I think so far throughout this beam lineup, Bowling Green really has been doing well with their form and being confident out there. And we are going to move back over to the floor. Brooklyn Sears with a 9.875, and this is Emily Smith. When you're beginning your routine, or just before, is there any sort of thought about Whoa. what your teammate before you did? Um, for me, I never really watched my teammate before me, but um, sometimes it can. But like, if you're confident in yourself and you know what you're doing, you can pull out a routine, a hit routine at that, no matter what. But Emily just did a round of back handspring full in on floor, and it was beautiful and controlled. And you don't see that often, maybe in some of the bigger conferences sometimes, but you don't see it often here in the MAC, and it's great to see it. Again, I think they're really trying to pull ahead here with BG, but I think BG is right behind them because they are focusing on every little detail. And the score is in for Taylor Jensen with a 9-8, and this is Catherine Wallbacker. Back hands bring layout, gorgeous. She's moving really fast, but she looks very confident and focused on everything that she's doing. Small balance check there. Covered up for that connection there by doing a different connection, which is good. Good full turn. Beautiful front toss to that connection. Pretty well. The NIU crowd's getting a little rowdy. She needs to stay focused. Round off. Double back to Smell. That's not something you see all the time either. And she executed that very well. Well, maybe a little bit of leg separation on that double back, but overall great routine besides a couple of balance checks. And we are going to head back over to the floor. 
This is Alana Anderson, and Emily's just scored a 9-9-2-5. That is amazing for NIU. Here we go for her first pass. Front hand spring, front double. Gorgeous, she's very controlled. Beautiful leaps. They were high off the ground, but they were either at or over 180, which is great. Judges definitely want to see that. but overall she covered up well and really controlled that landing. Overall, good routine for NIU. Should either, it should score maybe about a 9-8, but overall great, great routine. And we are back over to the beam. Still waiting on that score to come in. And the score is in with a 9.75 for Catherine, and this is now Dahlia. Nice full turn. That was gorgeous. Beautiful leaf combination. She looks very confident on this beam right now. Anchoring the beam lineup isn't always easy. Balance check there. Definitely missed that connection for sure, but overall, great routine. Should score well for BG. And we're going to head back over the floor with their anchor, Tara. And the score is in for Alana with a 9 8. Alana back in to bring double pike. Gorgeous landing. She was very controlled. Really showing this routine off right now. Heading into our second pass. Pass just a little bit of a couple of bounces there on that landing, but overall great form on that second pass. Now heading into our final pass. Round of backhand spring, double back, great controlled landing there. That should score very well for NIU. Beautiful. I think so far NIU has really pulled far ahead in front of BG based on the details that they get into, like those landings, the forms in the air, the leaps, making sure they're hitting 180. So great job for them on floor. And we're going to head back over the beam. They have an exhibition. This is Serena Ross. And the score is in for Dahlia with a 9-4-2-5. Again, probably got that hit from that dismount because she didn't get that connection there. Beautiful front aerial connection, that was cool. 
gorgeous. exhibition routine for Bowling Green. And NIU, we're going to head back over to the floor. They have an exhibition, Olivia Lind. Gorgeous first pass. She really saved that landing. You never want to go out of bounds there, but that was gorgeous. She really saved that. Combination very controlled. You can see here they're having fun with their teammates. Heading into this second pass. Round of backhands going double pike, just a little bit short landed that, took a couple steps forward. But overall, decent routine for NIU. And just to go over the scores here, for Bowling Green on the beam, they got a 48.7. And for NIU on the floor, they got a 49.25. Overall, great rotation for both teams. Definitely can see NIU pulling forward in front of Bowling Green just a little bit. I think Bowling Green really wants to bring it home here on floor and focus on those little details. And we'll see if Bowling Green can do just that. One event to go for Bowling Green. They'll end on the floor. NIU will head over to the beam. We'll be back shortly to round out the day. Years. And they became really great resources starting in the spring of 2020. We worked with local school districts to organize these academic enrichment camps. Our faculty, staff, and students, we made a difference in people's lives, and I think that's what a public university for the public good should be about. Colleges and universities are no longer accepting just a student. We are accepting an entire support network and family unit with them. How do we engage and leverage our families to be supporters and partners so their students can be more successful inside and outside the classroom? Parent Family New Student Connections was created and established in November 2020 to provide support, communication, advocacy, education for our families. We're not asking our families to drop them off and leave. We're actually saying, be a partner. One of our favorite new initiatives is, during move-in weekend, we've hosted a tassel ceremony where we have given our families a tassel, which is a promise from the institution that their voice and presence and support and partnership will make the difference in helping their students be successful. As we evolve as a department, one of the ways that we want to activate our current families is creating a parent council. Having voices of current families advise us, advise our department, we are working towards the same goal, which is retaining and graduating our students. It started with you. A breeze building momentum. A movement gathering force. Even before you could see it, you could feel it. The flutter of hope, the rush of potential, 
the inexplicable pull toward the edge of opportunity. Falcons take flight. Seven years ago, Bowling Green State University challenged our community to join us in changing lives for the world. Powered by the strength of Falcons who came before us, guided by our indomitable spirit, together we rise. Even as the world took new shape amidst a global pandemic, we fixed our sights on tomorrow's horizon. You gave, and it altered our course. You gave, and we are forever changed, united in our vision of the future. More than 38,000 donors answered the call, representing all 50 states and 26 countries. More than 160,000 contributions were given raising over $250 million. 101.7 million in scholarship and student support funds were committed, creating 235 new scholarship funds to accelerate student success and accessibility. More than 28 million in gift revenue was received in fiscal year 2020 alone. Our highest level of yearly philanthropic support, demonstrating the unparalleled commitment of Falcons in the face of extraordinary upheaval. Stirred by emotion, propelled by purpose, lifted by your empowerment, we are airborne. From historic gifts that changed our campuses to focused contributions ensuring that all Falcons soar, your impact is profound. We are educating the world's next generation of trailblazers to forge ahead, honoring our historic strength in business education, preparing journalists, media, and communication professionals to seek the truth, skating with an eye toward the future, and building up our frontline healthcare heroes for those with the courage to respond and preserve our public health. This is not the end of a campaign. It's the beginning of our path forward, one renewed with meaning and optimism, unbridled by the conventions of how it's always been done. Because when Falcons take flight, we make a difference forever. Bowling Green State University, a public university for the public good. So my name is Sadia Azmi and I'm from Mumbai, India and my major is psychology. BGSU was my choice because I did a lot of research and I applied to quite a few universities and I got through them too. But BGSU's program for I.O. is ranked really highly, actually ranked number three in the country. And so it was an easy choice. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got here, um, you have to understand that I'm coming from Mumbai, which is just kind of called the New York of India. And so it was a big, busy city, and coming to Bowling Green was like, whoa, like what century, something has changed here. Initially, it was a little bit of a surprise shock, but then as I got to meet people, you know, I, I met my advisor here on campus, and then I made friends just living in the dorms. Slowly, I knew nobody when I came to campus, but slowly I made so many friends that within a month or two, it just started feeling great being here. I have Back here as we head, head to our final event of the day, Bowling Green going to head to the floor, NIU on the beam, looking at the scores opposite that on beam. Bowling Green's last event, 48.7, and NIU had a 49.275 on the floor. Extended their lead just a little bit, but still within reach here for Bowling Green if they can put together some good floor routines. Yes. yes. This is definitely going to be a great rotation. It's the last event. You never know what's going to happen. Overall scores right now, Northern Illinois 146-3, Bowling Green 145-5. Yeah, and just to go over the lineups for both events on floor for Bowling Green will be Megan Dishas, Lauren Bannister, Katrina Mendez, a bull neck, Brooke McNamara, Taylor Jensen, Catherine Wallbacher, and an exhibition Bailey Lawrence. And then on beam will be for NIU, Brooklyn Sears, Kendall George, Tara, Kaufmal, Emma, O'Leary, and Morgan. And they will have an exhibition in the lease. We're going to 
gonna start first on the beam with Brooklyn Sears. checks really throughout this routine so far. Beautiful full turn. Just a small balance check there on that jump combination. Now our dismount. Ground off one and a half, small step forward, but overall great routine for NIU, great start. We're going to head over to the floor with Megan Dishes for Bowling Green. start for Bowling Green. And we're going to head back over to the beam. Brooklyn Sears with a 9.65 and this is Kendall George. Nice backhand swing layout. Maybe a small leg bend on that layout. and her skills, they're so well executed. Split jump, split three quarters. Nice. Now she's heading into that dismount. Round off one and a half, step forward overall. Great build upon that routine from the first routine. I think NIU is looking great on this event so far. And we're going to head back over to the floor with Lauren Bannister. Still waiting on that score for Megan Deishas to come in. And the score is in with a 9-7-2-5.
we go to her first pass. I don't know if Becky can't bring double back. Unfortunately, she took a step out of bounds. Hate to see it. Luckily, it was only like one step, but she had a good save. Switch side, straddle full was gorgeous. Hit 180. Oh, that is a gorgeous skill. I wish I could do that. <laughs> I love watching some of the tricks on floor. We're gonna head into the second pass. Front layout, front full. Great controlled landing. Good form. Looks like she's really having a lot of fun during this routine right now. She's heading into the last pass. Round off one and a half front layout. Good form. Nice controlled landing. Overall, great routine besides that step out of bounds. I really think that it should score pretty okay. Because since that one step, I think it's only a 10. So that should be a good score for VG. Definitely might be a routine that they want to drop, though. We're heading back over to the beam with Tara. The score for Kendall George is a 9.725. Beautiful full turn. Had a little bit of a hop there out of that layout, but she controlled it and finished it very well. Beautiful side aerial. Just a little bit of a balance check on that leap combination. that dismount round off one and a half it's really just a tiny tiny hop but overall that was a great routine for them besides the small balance checks should continue to build off of that last routine and we are going to head back over to the floor with Katrina still waiting on that score for Lauren Bannister to come in and I think the judges are talking a little bit. So it might be a little bit of a wait. Scores in for Tara on beam with a 9.725. I think this score is being finalized now for Lauren Bannister on floor. Katrina looks like she's having just a little bit of fun there while she's waiting. score is coming in and it is a hold on A nine five for Lauren Bannister, and this is Katrina. <laughs> Heading into her first pass, round of back handspring double pike, gorgeous controlled landing. Beautiful loop combinations. Those leaps hit 180. I think she had a little bit of a like slide step on there. Now she's heading into her second. 
second pass. Front layout, front full. Great form on that. You can see your teammates doing the routine with her. Definitely having fun with that. She's heading into her last pass. Round up by handspring. Double back, just very slow on that rotation, which caused her to have a little bit of a short landing on that. But overall, decent routine for Rowan Green. Definitely after coming off of Lauren Bannister's step out of bounds, that should be a good routine for them. And we're going to head back over to the beam with Emma. A little bit of a bounce check on that full turn. Nice back hand spin layout. That was beautiful. Beautiful switch lead combination. Unfortunately, she had a little bit of a bounce check there. And how important is it after those balance checks to try to lock yourself back into the rest of your routine? It's super important because you don't want to carry them into any other skill because then it could cause you to either fall or have another balance check. And we really want to make sure we save every tenth possible. Beautiful dismount, just a small hop, but overall she had a good save. She didn't let that balance check carry into her into the rest of that routine. And we are going to head back over to the floor with Bowling Green. Katrina's score has just come in with a 9775. And up next is Brooke McNamara. <laughs> Handspring double pike. Her chest was just a little bit down, but overall she had a controlled landing on that. Heading into that second pass. Round up back into one and a half. Front layout. Gorgeous form. side, straddle full, great hit right to 180. She looks like she's having fun, same with her teammates. Now she's going to head into that last pass. Double back, gorgeous and controlled landing. Great routine for Bowling Green. That should score well. Now we're headed back over the beam. Emma with a 9-7, and this is O'Leary. Back in spring layout. Nice straight legs and pointy toes. Beautiful leap combination. That was two switch leaps in a row. She looks very focused. Beautiful front aerial. Side aerial. This is about to be a big score for NIU. And a, oh, a 
Oh, just a small hop on that dismount. She almost had it. But overall, that was a beautiful routine for NIU. That should score very well. And the score just came in on floor for Brooke with a 9825. Gorgeous. And next up is going to be Taylor Jensen on the floor. something about Taylor Jensen. She has very beautiful floor work. So you might see a little bit of it during this routine. And now she's headed into this first pass. Beautiful front handspring double. Really make sure to control that landing. They all had 180, which is amazing. Now heading into this next pass, round off, one and a half front layout. Gorgeous, really got that landing there. That was a great routine for Bowling Green. That should score very well. Back over to the beam, O'Leary with a 9-8, and this is Morgan Hooper. Now that is a very difficult series, a standing layout to another standing layout, and that was gorgeous, that was very well executed, and that was also a wolf turn. Very difficult as well. She's very confident in this beam routine right now and it looks gorgeous and very well executed. Beautiful leap series. Ooh, this is now the dismount. Round off one and a half. Step on the dismount, but overall the rest of the routine was gorgeous, well executed. All of her splits were 180 in stuck landings. So that should be a very big score for NIU. We are going to head back over to the floor. The girls are cheering, so it looks like a big score. Just waiting for us to get that score. And it is a 9925. That is a great score for Bowling Green. But they still got one more. And that's just what the Falcons were looking for. Yeah, we got one more, and this is Catherine Wellbacker. And one of the things to watch for here, gymnastics is a team sport unlike any other in the sense that you're competing by yourself. But watch how locked in our teammates are from off to the side of the floor. Heading into that first pass, front tuck, rounded back handspring, double back. Gorgeous landing. She looks like she's having fun. She's smiling throughout this entire routine. Heading into that leaf combination. Gorgeous. All of those splits were 180 or higher. This routine looks very high energy. And she is having so much fun with it. Heading into that next pass, round of Beckham's bring double pike. 
little couple steps out of it, but overall decent controlled landing. That was a very big routine for Bowling Green, and that should score very well. She had a lot of fun, and her teammates are really proud of her as well. And the score is in for Morgan Hooper with a 9.825, and that brings their team score on beam to a 48.775. And this is an exhibition, Emily's. Good back handspring layout. Step out. I think she's a little bit soft in those arms on that back handspring. Beautiful jump combination. Now the dismount round off. Double back, a little bit of a step forward, but that's another round off double back that we have seen in this competition, even though it doesn't count great experience for her to get out there and compete today. And I think we are going to head back over to the floor because Bowling Green has an exhibition, and this is going to be Bailey Lawrence. And the score just came in for Catherine with a 9.825, which brings their floor score to a 49.075. Great to see Bowling Green breaking into that 49. Final score looks like Bowling Green with a 194.575 and NIU with a 95.075. Handspring double back, just a little bit low in that chest on that landing, and she stepped forward. But overall, that was a great pass. Switch side straddle pull, straddle pull. Kind of cheated those pulls, but overall, great hit on those 180 splits. That next pass. Front layout, front one and half, but unfortunately she was just a little low on that. Her chest was down. She took a couple steps forward. Definitely want to make sure she kicks those heels to get that rotation over. But overall, decent routine. Great again to get that experience out there for some of these girls that are exhibitioning on some of these events. Overall, I think it was a great meet, especially for Bowling Green. They really picked it up from last weekend. Just a half point difference between the two right now. And now you are 195.075, Bowling Green with a 194.575. And looking at the schedules coming up for both teams, NIU will host a quad meet this coming Friday with University of Wisconsin, Whitewater, Southeast Missouri State, and Lindenwood. And Bowling Green will host Illinois State right back here in a dual meet next weekend, Saturday next time. So six days from now, Bowling Green will be back in action. I think they definitely want to make sure they go back in there and just work on those little details. That'll do it today. NIU takes this one over Bowling Green, but the Falcons will return to Anderson Arena next week, six days from now. Justin check out Illinois State served. versus and Bowling Green next weekend. Are as outraged as those who are. You don't know what you don't know, but at the same time, you have to be sensitive about the different things that are going on in people's lives. We're all struggling and we're all fighting a battle, and we have to figure out how to build that bridge. We ultimately want them to leave and do public good through teaching physical education and health education. We want to promote moving. Kids very early on, probably uh, 18 months to two years, kids can initially start to interact in types of activities where they are, for example, 
running, skipping, hopping. So just getting uh, somebody to roll a ball and a child to go after it, um, collect it and bring it back. That's perfectly permissible for young children to start doing. And then obviously over a period of time, those skills begin to develop. It's really important that we have strong role models. We call it observational learning. And I think when we grow up with seeing people that we admire partaking in physical activity, we're more likely to do that, whether that be a professional person or someone like a parent. When we see them active, more than likely we're gonna be active. And I think that's really important that we, we instill physical activity from a young age. As kids approach kindergarten, preschool, um, we're starting to teach them the importance of different types of locomotor skills, hopping, skipping, running, jumping, galloping. Those sort of skills will initially provide a foundation for later on skill development. Also develop their critical thinking, decision making in games and sports. That's something else that we can do, as well as teaching them how to interact with one another. My definition of a frontline falcon is somebody who works in a discipline that provides services to people when they're very vulnerable. They are there every single day taking care of our loved ones when we can't. Early on in the pandemic, it was clear to me that our students and faculty were gonna to need to be out and uh, on the front lines working. Our medical laboratory sciences students participated in COVID testing as soon as COVID testing was possible. Our long-term care administration students and alums provided very compassionate care to people who were isolated and alone. Our nursing graduates got out into the workforce a month earlier than they would normally be. Our graduates were able to enter the workforce on a temporary nursing license, and those graduates hit the floor running. The School of Nursing began in July of 2020, and it was really a fitting time in history to create a nursing program to help increase the demand. There's many, many ways that the disciplines in the College of Health and Human Services rapidly made adjustments and began delivering services to the community. We thank you for answering the call to come to this profession, and we thank you for everything you do day after day. Thank you all for being here today. You are here because you made a decision to be collegiate student athletes. So clap it up for yourselves. So let me ask you a question. Raise your hand if you wanna win a conference championship. Raise your hand if you wanna win a national championship national championship keep your hands up if you're willing to wake up 4 30 in the morning for mandatory workouts those hands will go down because not everyone's willing to make those sacrifices keep your hands up if you're willing to put student first all the responsibilities that it takes to be a student athlete are you up for that challenge the lifelong friends that you will make the failed attempts that you will learn from the education that you will earn will all develop you for life after sports. So I'll ask you, are you willing to compete? Are you willing to execute? And are you willing to be a leader? Are you ready? My major does not define me. I'll probably be working jobs that don't exist yet. I want a fulfilling career and to make a difference. A rewarding life starts with being true to yourself then taking action. Our design coaches help identify what empowers you so you can think big, try boldly, and stay curious. A BGSU education is bigger than a degree. It's a toolkit. For a life of purpose. I think education changed dramatically through the pandemic. We saw teachers being incredibly creative and reaching out to one another to network for ideas to keep students engaged and still learning. Our commitment was to make sure that people were educated, to do it in a safe environment. One faculty member brought a camper and parked outside to meet students there. We could space out and do the office hours in a, a socially distanced, safe manner. And I just wanted to let my students know that you know, I'm a real person outside of the Zoom box. For a lot of faculty, this was the first time they've been teaching online, but for faculty in our college, we've had robust online programming for years. And they became really great resources starting in the spring of 2020. We worked with local school districts to organize these academic enrichment camps. Our faculty, staff, and students, we made a difference in people's lives, and I think that's what a public university for the public good should be about.